All right, thank you. Welcome all all to the uh, Township Committee meeting, March 15th, 2021. This is all via Zoom remote access. Uh, roll call, please, Mrs. Martin. Mr. Brown. Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Here. Ms. Holland. Still has not appeared, okay. Uh, Mr. Olette. Here. Mr. Templeton. Here, also present, Mr. Schwab, our Township Administrator. Let's see, we've got uh, Mrs. Martin, our Deputy Municipal Clerk. Uh, the, the Chief, Chief's not made it. We'll record them as they call in or join the, join the meeting. And we have uh, Mrs. Provenzano as our Technical Specialist for tonight. Did I miss anyone? And we have numerous special guests in our virtual audience. Uh, flag salute, please. I think it's visible. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag. Right. Right. The United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with uh, liberty and justice, justice for all. Okay. Mayor, the okay. chief is logged in now. Uh, great. Good evening, chief. Uh, sunshine statement. Uh, please be advised proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open P Public Meetings Act in the following manner. Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post and published in the January 5th, 2021 editions. Written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the Township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Uh, There's a remote meeting statement. Um, there's a, a Zoom meeting address, and that's posted on the Township website, on the front door, meeting IDs, various phone numbers. Remote public meeting statement, advanced public comments, advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. All advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the public, published public meeting start time. All advanced public comments must be submitted to the municipal, municipal clerk's email at jlord.delancotownship.com or to the municipal clerk's attention 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey 08075. Public comments resub, submitted before the remote public meeting deadline will be read aloud during the remote public meeting. Uh, members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make those comments questions via audio option or by typing in their comment or question via the, via the Zoom platform chat option to all participants, not a specific participant. During the public comment sessions or during any scheduled public meetings, comment questions submitted via the chat function during the time when the meeting is officially open to the public will be read. Other comments, questions submitted via the chat function at any other time during the meeting may or may not be read during the meeting. Members of the public were deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 at Sequeter may be muted or after initial warning for the duration of the public comment session and the word remainder of the re remote meeting session. Uh, the agenda document, the agenda for this remote meeting is available uh, on the Delanco Township website web address is shown. Let's see, a first item ordinance 2021-05 amending the township code at chapter 110-13 governing fences and walls to allow certain non-conforming fences to be maintained and replaced. This is third reading by title only continued public hearing. Uh, the hearing is now open to the public on ordinance 2021-05 only. We expect that this may be, will be continued uh, after tonight's probably numerous comments. So if you have a comment, raise your hand and we'll call on you, Ms. Van Gendron, let you start off. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to know if you got um, comments from the board, uh, the, the Joint Land Use Board regarding this ordinance. No, I didn't. We received a letter from uh, uh, your solicitor, um, uh, Lugardi, and the, uh, we also had a, uh, um, uh, a letter, a memo from our township solicitor, Mr. Heinhold, on their comments, and also a markup copy of the ordinance with some suggested edits from uh, uh, Ms. Taylor, from Taylor Design. 
Okay. That's what we have. Has that been distributed to us? Because I don't have it. I did not receive it. Where did that come from? Um, Was that, I think Doug emailed it to everybody today. Yeah. So it had to be late in the day. Had to be late in the day because I did yeah. not. I have not signed it either. I haven't seen it either. Either. I haven't seen um, the joint land use boards uh, from their attorney, from Doug, or the comments from your board, Lori. Yeah, what happened was the uh, uh, their attorney sent it to Doug, and we thought Doug was going to be, Janice and I thought Doug was going to be sending it on to you with his comments. He thought because it was understood that it was going to be tabled, he didn't then send those comments till today, and it was in the afternoon today in the afternoon. So that's yeah, the earliest Doug's that some people may have seen it. Doug's email was sent at 3, 3.15. So I didn't know that it was gonna be tabled either. So our, so I guess we should table it so that we have an opportunity to read those comments. Well, uh, do we wanna take the opportunity since we've got many of the uh, planning board members here to hear yeah. directly from them and, and have some back and forth and uh, we can review um, the three memos uh, between now and the next meeting. That's good. All right. I agree. Okay. Go ahead, uh, uh, Lori. Well, um, the board did discuss, the Joint Land Use Board did discuss um, the proposed changes to the ordinance, um, which we felt were not in keeping with what we suggested. We had lengthy discussions um, at one meeting um, and then continued uh, last meeting. And um, we, we, we felt that, that the, well, I shouldn't speak for everyone. I felt that um, the township committee in, in the ordinance that they, they developed may not have uh, understood our comments because they were um, not in keeping with what we suggested. And I wasn't sure if you just didn't agree with what we suggested or if you didn't understand in some way. So, um, you know, we had asked our, uh, our planner and our attorney, you know, to, to communicate as well as Fern because uh, Mr. Roulette sits on, on our board as a liaison to the township committee um, to uh, make sure that you uh, understood our concerns about it. And, and my major concern is that um, it is one of a, a sightliness and an openness and, and what we want our community to look like. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid if we grandfather um, all of these illegal fences, because a lot of them have been done illegally, um, that that really just validates somebody uh, not following the proper channels to do things. Um, and and more, moreover, I'm concerned about the fence height uh, in the side yard um, to the to the front of the house, but to, of the dwelling. But, you know, th those are um, other other things that I'm sure other people will address. So I'll just leave my comments there. Thank you. I know there was a lot of discussion back and forth as far as how far the six foot fence could come up the side of the house. Currently it's from the rear building line and I know that it was, you know, halfway or up to the front building line and then what determines that front building line. And I think the planning board settled on something like a third or 30%, something in those lines. So um, I'll just, I don't need to say anything more right now. Uh, anyone else from the planning board with a comment there and uh, let's see who else is in there. Uh, this is Tom. I, I, I think they were, our comments were summed up very well. Does anybody in committee uh, have questions? Mr. For Mayor, I don't know how to raise a hand or anything. That's good, uh, That's good Dan. What, go ahead. I'm Dan Martin. Uh, good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, to continue what with uh, what Ms. Van Gendren said, one of the challenges I see on your ordinance is it legitimizes any fence constructed up to the date of your ordinance. So if I put a, a fence up 
the day before the ordinance is voted upon. Once the ordinance is voted upon, it's legal. Mm -hmm. It doesn't talk anything about it. That's in section uh, 110.13K of the ordinance that is proposed. Um, and that, that's an issue. Um, I also have a personal issue. Uh, the adjacent property to mine, lot 1506, lot three, extended their fence. Uh, I believe the zoning official has misread our current ordinance and allowed it to extend to the property line fronting a public right of way. But there's a building permit. What am I going to do now? Hmm. So I think the zoning official is misreading our current ordinance also. What's that address again, Dan? It's I'd rather give the parcel number, lot 1506, lot three. You said 1506? Yes, sir. Thank you. That way it's not anything personal, it's a parcel. Yeah. Arsenal. I have a question for the board. <clears throat> In the event uh, there's this issue came up because of a property, uh, I'm sure you're all aware of it, but uh, he abuts a property on Burlington Avenue. So he is adjacent to a backyard. So could this all have been avoided if that property owner on Burlington Avenue wanted to replace his rear yard fence, he would be permitted to put a six foot fence all the way across, which would abut the man's side yard. From what I understand, this has happened in the town before and there's been a swip swappy of uh, permits being pulled uh, to where this is possible to be done. So what is your take on that issue that somebody's rear yard lines up to somebody's side yard? Anybody? John, uh, the joint land use, this is Fern, uh, the joint land use board, we had uh, a discussion about that again at the last meeting uh, and uh, this particular property that we're discussing, uh, their side fence, because it is up against the, uh, the backyards of those folks on Burlington Avenue, uh, that resident is able to replace that fence is uh, where that ended up. Uh, and the discussion of where we're at now is between the resident on Vine Street uh, who's looking to replace that section of fence from his house to the side fence. That, uh, that's where we're at. Yeah, that, that particular property at 327 Vine, I believe is the address. The current fence that they have that is six feet is at the end of their driveway not at the front building line, but not quite 30% from the street, I believe, that that's what the Joint Land Use Board, I think Michelle put in her letter 33, but I think Fern had indicated that it was 30% mentioned at the meeting some time ago when you had the meeting, but this was before we came up with this particular amendment. And it was basically um, done for this particular, um, to help this particular individual out. Because if you have a fence at the end of your driveway, you're not blocking, um, you're not up at the front property line at that point, at, at least on some of these properties. So we were trying to come up with a solution so some residents that have this problem didn't have to get a variance through the joint land use board because of the uh, cost involved. So we were trying to accommodate them, not trying to um, make things look worse in town. And if you take a look at that property, which maybe, maybe some of you have, uh, it wouldn't affect any view, any sight line. Um, this particular property the fence um, before this resident moved in there was existing 
there was a dog that lived on one of those houses on Burlington Avenue. And it was a good thing they had a fence. Uh, this particular dog was actually bit one of our residents and um, attacked her dog some time ago. So the fence was needed um, to keep them out. And some of those homes along Burlington Avenue, I don't believe their backyards are the greatest, but if you take a look at that property, 327 Vine Street, half a double, um, and the fence is right beyond their driveway. Um, I think that's what we were trying to do is to um, simplify a process for him. So I don't know exactly what the footage was from where his current fence exists that he wants to replace to the street. I'm not sure what that is. I didn't go out and measure it. I don't know if anyone else did. I believe it was around 24 feet. So six feet short of what um, the Joint Land Use Board initially sent to us. This was before we received these comments from your attorney and Doug, because I haven't received them yet. Lori? My concern is that in, in trying to um, make it easier for one resident, um, you're changing the ordinance for the whole town. And, and that's not the way things are supposed to be done. Just like the Joint Land Use Board isn't supposed to spot zone a property Right. That's basically what you're doing by this. Uh, and why shouldn't he have to go through the process like everyone else? If that fence was not put up legally, then it's illegal. And why should he be allowed to replace it and not go through the proper channels? Everyone else in town has to do that. Why are we making an exception and, and, and bending over backwards and changing our entire ordinance for one person, for one resident? It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't think it's good governance. I would say, sorry, and sorry everyone that I'm that I'm late. Um, that it's not necessarily trying to bend over backwards for this one resident. It's about looking at the ordinance in totality and seeing that maybe this carve out doesn't represent common sense for for the town. That a six foot fence isn't going to affect air or light or or change anything about public uh, public parking because the four foot fence would have exactly the same effect as a six foot fence. It's just recognizing that perhaps we've overstepped and we're, we're governing in this area with too heavy of a hand. I, I disagree. And, and I'd like to know if you had your planner look at this around the town. And what, and what conclusions, what report they developed based on what you just said? The planner was not brought into it, Lori. I can tell you that. Um, Why not? Why I do have, you have a planner? Uh, I have no idea. The ordinance. Um, we, didn't, we didn't ask the planner to look at it and I, um, I guess that's up to the mayor. I mean, I didn't know I should reach out to him myself and ask him to take a look at it. Well, I don't understand because our planner for the Joint Land Use Board is the same planner I believe that the township has on on uh, a professional agreement with. So I, I, they're I, already I, familiar I, with this issue. I don't understand why they're not being consulted. Right. Well, they were consulted from Michelle on this. But they I, were consulted by I, the township I, committee I, I, or by I, I, the Joint I, Land Use Board? Nobody answered my question. What do you do with the backyard property on a corner? And there's a lot of corners in town. If I own a corner property and I want to put a six foot fence for privacy, I should be allowed. But then my neighbor, it's their side yard. So shouldn't there be a clause in the ordinance that said that, you know, unless abutting to someone's backyard, you know, because a lot of times neighbors can't agree on who's going to pay to replace the fence. One neighbor might have money. The other neighbor's got a fallen down stockade fence and he wants to replace it. He's ready to invest in the beautifying his property, but the neighbor doesn't want to pay. He don't have the money or whatever, or the heirs don't have the money. So, you know, just about every block has four corners. So there's this situation throughout the town. Well, does it 
this to John's point, is that a legitimate, uh, is that is that a way out of this, at least for this one, uh, one, one location? He's not a corner property. He may be a corner property on Vine, but the actual corner property is on Burlington Avenue. Correct. Okay. They face- So the Burlington it, Avenue property has to pull the permit to get a six foot fence, correct? That would work. Yeah, that's that's a loophole that some folks have used. I heard it last week. Somebody told me they mm -hmm. they heard it from a, a I don't know what zoning officer could have been whew, could have been Mickey Brennan way back then, but somebody uh, was told the way to do it is to get your neighbor to pull the permit. Hmm. And again, I don't I'm not mentioning any names, but uh, that's a way around it. So what do we protect ourselves as far as law and order, Lori? What do you do to protect that? Well, I, I think you need to consult the planner yeah. um, to, to figure out what exactly you would be making legal and what you wouldn't. I believe that the actual, um, what you're describing being done is what happened in Dan Martin's case. Okay. So I would, like, I would like I would like I would like Dan to I think he could show you a picture of of what the the fence looks like that abuts his property, and and that was done illegally. So even though the gentleman got a permit, it's it really wasn't not, done illegally. It was no, done you're right. without the right authorization, improper you're right, authorization. You're right. Yeah, you're right. So is that recent, Dan? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, because hey, I, I don't recall seeing that. And if you give me about two minutes, I'll pull up the photograph. And if the host would be kind enough, I can share it with everybody. Oh, good. Okay, that would be that would be helpful. But uh, Mike, you said we did uh, ask the planner to look at this. Well, it's indirectly there. You know, the, the Taylor Group is is works for both the planning board and the committee. It's obvious we referred it to the planning board, and they referred it to. Uh, their planner, Michelle Taylor, it's all kind of one house. And so I would assume, and it was expecting that that consultation would work for everyone. Uh, I'm not But then you made changes to what we suggested and you didn't consult with her as to what those changes um, would result in. Well, I've got a markup from Michelle Taylor that Doug Heinhold had forwarded of this ordinance. Only after we again asked her to mark it up at our last meeting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're getting feedback from the planner to say that we didn't talk to a planner is, you know, or get or consult that. You know, we did. We have. So there you go, Dan. We got it. How do I get that big? Yeah. How do I? I can't see it. It's, I don't uh, see it. I don't think so. It goes right up to the sidewalk, Dan. Our Aaron has to give Dan mm -hmm. access so that he can show it on the full screen. Okay. Everybody, hang on one moment. Is, is, is that union down there in the corner? He's on Pennsylvania Avenue, Dan is. He's the second house in on Pennsylvania Avenue. Is that the backyard of a Union Avenue property? From Spruce. Or it's, it's Spruce? The corner property is on Spruce, I believe. No, Dan's pretty far. Oh, it's, Union. it's Union. It's okay. Union. I'm sorry. I think it's Union. Okay. Well, there is like right now. I think there's a swimming pool there, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the corner property. I don't know what property is getting the fence. Is it the uh, corner? Vinyl, or... vinyl isn't legal for a swimming pool. Dan? If you are um, ready, you have the right to share your screen. Boy, she's so kind. She is. <laughs> hey, that's a big fence. I don't see it. That's the I bridge. I don't either. <laughs> I'm seeing the bridge. <laughs> He okay. hasn't shared his screen yet, everyone. Just, just hang on. I'm not sure if he's working on something. Or... There is a paragraph in our ordinance that says, dealing with this particular property, that their main residence is on Mulberry Street. There you go. He's um he's now has it. Oh wow. 
Can you all see? Uh, yeah. yeah. That, that's not what this amendment addresses. This amendment does not address that type of fence to go all the way out to the sidewalk. It's at, not at the rear building, but um, the rear building line, but it's kind of like not quite 30 feet, but it's 24. And if you look at this particular property, it sets back from the front line, uh, the front building line. So that this is Thank not you. what our amendment addresses. Right. Uh, the property, uh, the main address is on Mulberry Street. So that is their uh, front yard is on Mulberry. Their rear mm -hmm. is on uh, Pennsylvania Pens Avenue. And if you read our ordinance, it's saying that if I read it correctly, that uh, this is their backyard. So it doesn't apply to the Pennsylvania Avenue as being a front uh, front street property. Wow, that's a site. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a straight through lot that goes from uh, street to street. Oh. And I read it a little bit differently than Mr. Uh, uh, than Fern does, but either way, he had a construction permit, or they had a construction permit. What am I going to do? Yeah, that's the site, Dan. I appreciate. Yes. Wow. And, and as I was, I thought I was muted. I took this photograph because this is when the transformer caught fire. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just happened. Okay, it, it was not taken to show the fence. Yeah. Right. This is the Google of the the prior fence with the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Right here. That's where it is now. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen soon right. because I think the committee has seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I would like the opportunity to read the comments from the Joint Land Use Board um, and Doug uh, before we move any further on this ordinance. And I would say that we table it until the next meeting. That's my suggestion because I think their comments are relative to whatever decision we make. And I do appreciate the Joint Land Use Board uh, discussing this for a second time. And uh, I think their comments should be considered. So that's what I would like to do. I'd like to see them. And had I known that they were coming through today, maybe I would have checked my email before this meeting. I checked it earlier today, but not tonight. So I apologize for not getting that, Lori. And thank you for your comments. This is Tom. I, I have a comment. I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but from what I remember about it, and it kind of goes back to what Fern said, the, I think what we're talking about here is a, a fence perpendicular to the house, to the side yard. Right. And the ordinance said parallel to the house. So if the ordinance, um, in addition to the comments that Lurie said, I think it should say perpendicular. Well, the, we, the fence we're talking about is, is perpendicular from the side of the house to the side yard fence. Yeah, that, I thought that wording was supposed to come out, Fern. Remember you brought that up to Doug at our last meeting? It was removed out of the one sentence, but it still appears in the in the ordinance itself as far as being parallel. Yeah, I saw that. But really, we're talking about one that's perpendicular, right? right? Correct. Correct. Uh, right. So wouldn't that, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that change the whole concept of backyard and side yard. I mean, all we're talking about is a short piece of fence between midway between the rear of the home and the front of the house and perpendicular from the house to the side yard. The, the side yard fence already exists. To my understanding, what he wants to do is fix the perpendicular piece. Also I wants to fix the side one too. He needs to right. fix the side one too because it's in a disrepair and he has a four-year-old. So he needs to fix the side yard too, the side yard fence in addition to what is uh, perpendicular to the street that's after his driveway. Okay, that was my only comment on it, thank you. And uh, Lori, Lori, Lori made it, you know, she, she said it right. Yes, she did. Yeah, the, the side yard fence, 
in our again our discussion at the joint lane use board was that the side yard fence uh, is six foot and to replace it with a six foot uh, is permissible uh, because it is the backyard of uh, the residents on Burlington Avenue. It's their backyard. So replacing that is not really the issue. Uh, the issue is uh, the perpendicular uh, fence from the house to the side yard fence. Which could be, I think if I read the ord our ordinance, it could be four feet if I'm not mistaken. But for some reason, it wouldn't work in this case because there's a door there or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember that particular. Um, but I thought if he had four feet perpendicular that he could do it then without the six foot fence, Lori. Isn't that how it reads? That's correct. Yeah. I had recommended that the four foot because then we wouldn't have had to change anything. Right. Is if he had a swimming pool in the backyard, a built-in swimming pool or an in-ground pool, uh, then he would need to have at least a five-foot fence there to a six-foot fence. The minimum think, would be five foot. Right. I think his deck starts right at where his back door comes out on that side of his house. And that's why the four-foot fence wouldn't work for this particular situation. Yeah. I, I believe that may be it. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, All right, so we'll continue this uh, till the next meeting. We'll table it to uh, the April, I believe it's uh, April 15th is our next one, correct? April 12th. Thank you. April 12th. We need a second. Kate made the motion. We need a second to vote, Mike. Mr. Mayor, before, before, is there anyone else from the public that wants to comment on this? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, as Mr. Schwab said, uh, let's see. Kate, you made a motion to continue, correct? Or to table? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. And a second, please. Second, Fern. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. And thank you, thank members you of the planning board who uh, provided your valuable comments. And we'll. Uh, review the paperwork that's been uh, sent uh, late this afternoon. And uh, I'm sure there'll be, uh, given that there's almost a month till the next meeting, a lot of uh, over the fence conversation to get this, uh, get this done right. Thank so, you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate uh, all the Mr. input. Mayor. So, Mr. Mayor. Uh, keep in to... mind that, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes. I just need to note, um, there was just one comment in the chat function, and that was from Mr. Matalevich identifying the property as being next to the Vitorinos. That's okay. Dan's property. That's yes. not. But yes. there were no there were no other chat comments during the fence uh, hearing discussion. Okay. Oh, Mr. Vitorino's property is on the corner of uh, right. Pennsylvania the, and the, Union. The, the frontage of that property in question is on Mulberry and it goes right. back all the way to Pennsylvania. Yeah. I didn't know that until I just Googled it. Uh, Vitorino's and uh, Mr. Martin's. Yeah, there's a lot in between, a backyard. Yeah, right. yeah, okay. I'm right. gonna go take a look at that. Yeah, thank you all again for uh, your comments and uh, uh, keep in mind that we have a growing uh, four-year-old that needs to be contained by a fence of some sort and uh, hopefully we can get this done before he's a senior in high school. So. Could always come to the joint land use board. We're open for business. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, let's see. Public comment statement. The purpose of the public comment session is to allow residents to share information and or views with the Lanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it's not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the comment public comment session. Uh, report of advanced remote meeting comments and questions. The sec section is to acknowledge and read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, either electronic mail or written letter as required by NJAC 5 colon 39-1. As sequitur, members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one or both of the com public comment sessions. Um, 
Meeting open to the public for comments and questions, session one. If you have a question, comment, state your name, please, address. And Mayor, for the record, um, to the best of my knowledge, we did not receive any advanced comments that either by mail or by email. Thank you. Seeing and hearing no questions or comments in the audience. Comment question section of this meeting is now closed to the public. Comments and reports. Uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Thank you. Just, just want to remind everyone we did receive the uh, assessor's February report for the record. And also we have a week from today, 3.30, we have our next and hopefully final uh, budget work session so that uh, by law, we have to introduce the budget by May, March 30th or the first scheduled meeting thereafter, which is April 12th. So uh, we will see those members of the governing body and uh, interested public next Monday at 3.30. That's all I have. Thank you, department heads. Uh, Chief DeSano, do you have anything for us tonight? Uh, a few things, Mayor. I'll, I'll try to be quick. Uh, the uh, I just want to let you know that the township engineer, myself, and Lieutenant Tilger went out and uh, reviewed the area in front of Pied Out, uh, Burlington Avenue, the 500 block, in reference to uh, uh, attempting to allow additional parking in that area. Um, the uh, I believe the township engineer is going to write something up officially, but uh, just to give you a verbal report that uh, we feel that uh, the best option is to allow um, parking in immediately in front of the store. Uh, there were some issues with uh, further down the block with, with sight lines, uh, people pulling out of the driveway, but that we should give them an additional two to three car parking, uh, you know, two, two large cars, three medium sized cars uh, in front of their store. And uh, we're gonna make a recommendation that it be timed um, you know, in the area of uh, 15, 20 minutes. And then um, so that people aren't uh, permanently parking there, residents um, across the street or next door. So there'll be a uh, constant, uh, while we're there, it seems that would uh, help uh, tremendously because the, um, the in and out wasn't very long. Uh, people were there less than 20 minutes picking up and, and leaving. And we also discussed uh, some things that the, the uh, business owner can do to, to help out with his parking lot. So he's going to start to have an employee's park off site and carpool. So that uh, should also help him with the, the availability of parking. And while I'm on the uh, parking, um, I guess, category, uh, you know, with the, uh, excuse me, River's Edge, the construction's done. I reported before that we're going to start enforcing uh, after warnings uh, and notification. We're going to start go back to enforcing the proper parking there, so our emergency equipment can get through fire trucks, ambulances, uh, plows. So we uh, started that. Um, it's it's uh, you know it's been a little rough for the residents of Rivers Edge. I understand uh, they got used to be able to parking in certain areas, which they weren't really supposed to. But I permitted it, given the special circumstances. So um, they're uh, slowly you know relearning the uh, proper ways to park. But I did was presented with an idea from one of the residents, which I'm gonna follow up with. And since we're gonna be doing parking ordinances for reference to Pied Out, the idea you know, presented to me was uh, initially when we laid out the uh, new parking, uh, the big issue was with, well, I shouldn't say the big issue. One of the issues was that the people were parking in front of those, um, those gang boxes for the mail and the post office refusing to deliver uh, the mail if there was a car obstructing their, you know, obstructing from them pulling off. So uh, I got a call into the post office and the idea was floated out there that maybe we can open those areas up for parking on a time basis, uh, finding, a, finding out when the post office is done their route and then put parking, uh, no parking there between certain times uh, when the post office does their route. And that would give some additional parking on evenings, uh, which it seems to be the biggest uh, uh, prime time for parking. People coming home from work, looking for a place to park, 
and then they leave in the morning before the post office would do the route. So I'm looking at that as a possibility. Um, and like I said, it's not gonna give them a lot of slots, but it shows goodwill on our part and uh, it will assist them in some, in some way. Uh, the other issue I want to talk about is the striping. Um, the, the, um, there was a question about, uh, I guess, improving or replacing or redoing the uh, cr pedestrian crosswalks at the uh, Newton's Landing uh, development. And um, I talked to Mr. Fox and he was, he came up with the idea that, um, uh, and I addressed River's Edge before that the, uh, you know, we need to restripe the yellow areas to make it clear where no parking is. So, and he also reminded me that um, he has, uh, a, I guess a road, um, you guys have road construction plan for the spring. And so he's thinking that uh, he can, whatever contractor he gets to do the striping for the road, for the road uh, program, he can also tie that into those other two areas. Uh, River's Edge and Newton's Landing and try to get a better price because the contractor is going to be out striping for us anyway. So um, I'll, I'll forward the information to Mr. Fox and make sure he gets it about the pedestrian crossings and Newton's Landing so he knows what the linear footage is. My recommendation is not to do it all at the same time but because it seems like uh, it's quite quite large um, but uh, I'll let Mr. Fox review and see if there's anything that he decides he can break it up. Uh, so that's the, uh, that uh, I'm assuming that you guys do not have a problem with Mr. Fox getting quotes um, and tying the quotes into the road program. Yeah, he can list them as alternates of the bid package. Okay. Uh, Jesse, you're gonna talk about the Franklin yeah, um, it's on the list. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you said you're done. Okay, go ahead. No, no, no. no. Um, the uh, Franklin Street, uh, two items. Uh, the, uh, as you're aware from Mr. Schwab, that they had to redo the foundations. So that was just done last week. Uh, so the foundations are poured and done. Uh, the next step is for them to erect the actual light. They haven't contacted us about, uh, about that. I'm sure that uh, they will be shortly. Um, they're probably going to allow the concrete to cure, but that should be the next step. And hopefully uh, by the end of March, the uh, light will be up and, and working. Um, we're waiting contact from them uh, to go ahead and, and schedule that uh, you know, traffic control for the, the light to actually go up. So we're uh, getting closer. Uh, we're, we're back to where we were. We took a couple steps back, but at least uh, we took a couple steps back forward. And also in reference to Franklin and, and Brownson Avenue, there was some concern from a uh, resident and uh, about uh, you know with the light not being there, potential tra uh, traffic hazard. Uh, we put police officers out there for uh, almost a two week period um, to monitor that area. Uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, depending how you look at it, uh, we did not observe any violations and, and the tickets were written. So, um, you know, we um, will continue to monitor the area and with the uh, pedestrian light, I'm sure that's going to make it a much more improved uh, crossing. And uh, 507 Burlington Avenue, um, I was uh, contacted uh, at the end of last week uh, from the contractor uh, that's being contracted by the uh, Burlington County Highway Department or Engineering Department. And it sounds like uh, they were inquiring about um, the particular is about uh, scheduling. So I expect that to be a coming down as well, probably by the end of the month. Uh, once I get notification of a scheduled date, I'll let you guys know, but uh, sounds like they're closer to getting that uh, building you know, knocked down and out of the way. Uh, Jesse, I have a question. Um, is the county going to repaint some of the crosswalks on uh, Cooper Street and Burlington Avenue, some of them are really faded out pretty bad. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll reach back out to them. My contact, Mr. Livingston, had retired, and uh, he was uh, someone who I uh, had his ear, and but uh, his retirement, so I got to try to develop a relationship with his replacement, who have yet uh, I've been introduced to, but I will uh, continue hey. to march and, um, and you know, 
they always said there was springtime, so okay. I'll put the bug in the ear. So if they're going to start doing the program in the spring, because um, the one on uh, Cooper Street is pretty bad as well, the one by the basketball courts. Right, it's really bad. And I yeah. usually reach out to Joe Brickley if you have his information. He's I, I, yeah, I, I do. Uh, I seem to have more. Um, I had more luck with Mr. Livingston, but I'll, I'll reach out to Joe Brickley. Joe Brickley has a lot of irons in the fire, and sometimes I don't think he uh, he listens as closely as, as I would like. He, but, he gets uh, back to me right away on 507 Burlington Avenue. He's gotten back to me okay. pretty quickly. So right. I, I, I'll try to use that resource and, and see if I can get a response or at least pin down to a, a, a month when they're being okay. out there. Uh, redoing the cross crosswalks. Thank you. All right. Anything else, Chief? And uh, I have no problem, no issue with Dolan. Um, I talked to the municipal prosecutor, so we're good to go. If we observe that violation, we uh, we can enforce it uh, about making uh, you know a right turn onto uh, Coopertown Road from from their driveway. Okay. That that's it. Great. Thank you. Good. Uh, You're welcome. Creative thinking on the uh, on the mail cluster boxes up at the River's Edge. Well, I, uh, I'm not going to take credit. It was a resident who uh, who actually called me. Uh, was not happy about the ticket, but he called with a not just pointing out a problem, but calling with a solution. So I, I truly appreciate when uh, yeah. people do that. And the uh, out at uh, Enterprise Drive, uh, uh, NVR and I guess uh, Stanker and Galetto got together and they did stripe out uh, uh, that intersection. Uh, uh, coming out of Misfits with that turning lane and the uh, no parking areas on both sides uh, where the tractor trailers were. So that was uh, your meeting a month or so ago had some, uh, has already gotten results. So. Okay, well, good. And I just, a uh, matter of fact, they contacted Public Works today. They asked them to uh, order those signs for the speed limit and the no parking. Yeah, very good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks. Yes, yes, John. I have a question, uh, Mayor Mike, if I may. Um, we're going to be introducing Ordinance 2021-6 uh, for that right-hand turn uh, coming out of Dolan. Okay. Yes. Now you said you're ready to enforce that violation. My question, and I was go I was going to bring it up prior to the um, prior to the uh, consent agenda items. Are, are we saying that other trucks from NBR um, and uh, Misfits Produce, American Strip Steel, Soho Enterprises, that they're not allowed to go past that intersection anymore? Because what no, the issue, if the public the, the reason issue John, is the right turn causes vehicles to cross the center line. Right. It has nothing to do with the driving towards uh, the center of town. It's so they are the allowed to drive in the center of town. They can't, they can't. It's too tight for them to not cross the center line. And that's what the county planning board was concerned about, not the volume of traffic headed towards Burlington Avenue. Yeah. It's it's more than a 90 degree turn coming out of what uh, is proposed as, as Dolan's entryway. And so that slight angle. to swing wide on that, they would be in the opposing traffic's lane. So that's okay. that's, that's all that's what it's about. I get it. Okay. So, so cars can turn, it's just trucks that might cross center line. They're concerned with that has no impact on anyone else coming down Cooperstown towards Burlington. Why didn't they just expand that exit lane coming out of there, even for a car? Or designed it differently, uh, you know, put toothpaste back in the tube, that's... Yeah. You know, I don't know. Well, as long as they don't put the a fence there. I think the way the site plan is two different lots there and they kept that entrance way in on the one side, on the one lot, rather than straddle the two lots is, is what I recall from the site plan. They were okay. originally planning two driveways. And that was too many driveways in a very small area. Yeah, because ours is right next to it. Correct. And as is Stylex and the municipal building or the garage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mrs. Martin, do you have anything for administration? Uh, no, not at this time, Mayor. All right. Thank you. Township Committee, uh, Mr. Brown. No, I don't really have much. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, that's it. Uh, Mrs. Patrick. Uh, yes, I do have a few things because actually um, I have met with all my meetings twice since I last reported to the committee since we haven't asked for our reports. Um, I did want you, I did want to clarify that the school's reply to DISA regarding the use of the schools for basketball um, was based on CDC rules and not a permanent um, no to other activities. As soon as CDC releases some of those restrictions, uh, DISA as well as, as um, recreation will be able to use some of those facilities again. Uh, I've attended two sewer authority meetings um, and they're moving forward with the collection system improvement project. Uh, it looks like it may take as long as two years for the permanent funding for that project, but um, we are looking into uh, interim funds so that the engineer can be paid for his portion. Uh, there was also an article in the Beverly Bee in February regarding fat birds, and that's uh, people putting uh, grease or oil down the drain. And Brandy was uh, kind enough to get that okay from Beverly Sewage Authority to send it out of the email blast to our residents. And I hope everybody read it uh, because it is um, quite a problem when people throw their oil or dispose of their grease, any kind of grease down the drain. Um, so if you haven't read that article, read it. Um, we're continuing to work with Beverly regarding the jet vac system. Um, Tom had indicated that that may take as long as a year for them to get that vehicle together, but um, it will be definitely an improvement. And um, the memorial for Freddie Weller is, is ready, it's done. And we hope to do that sometime around May the 27th since that's um, Freddie's birthday. So um, Doug Weller will be taking care of um, scheduling that and we'll let everybody know. Um, recreation, I've had two meetings with them. Um, as you may know, the um, Eagle Scout project with DJ Fenimore has been moved to West Avenue. So he did come to one of our meetings and uh, he's gonna do some markers, some cleanup signs, and uh, he may power wash and paint that sign. We are giving out Easter baskets and dye kits to the children this year since we cannot have the Easter egg hunt. That'll be on March 27th from 11 to one. It'll be a drive-through like we did the gingerbread. We have 114 youth registered for that. Um, all the other activities that REC has, we have on a continual uh, calendar until we are advised otherwise. So um, the paperwork has been sent out for the parade. Um, I did take the liberty of filling out a form that I will hand in to Erin stating the Township Committee will march and ride in the parade. Uh, I believe that's what we normally do. Uh, I attended the seniors February meeting. I was unable to make the March meeting due to a conflict and um, they only had like six members on, but it was nice to see their faces and uh, see how everybody's doing. Um, school board, I looked into some information. I emailed Carol Murphy and Troy Singleton um, regarding uh, the schools, the low percent that our schools receive, we're only receiving 30% of the uh, amount that we should be receiving for our uh, children with some kind of learning disability. And I did get one reply that we're getting an increase of 9.54%. And uh, Richard had forwarded another email indicating another amount that uh, the school is um, on board to get. Um, I was contacted by Stanker and Galetto and uh, Southern New Jersey Development Council regarding a quote that they're putting out for a news release regarding Stanker and Galetto, how it was to deal with them and also misfits. Um, and um, an individual from Stanker and Galetto also went uh, over the, um, the issue with the, uh, their employees walking back and forth without sidewalks. So I did recommend to them that they provide reflective vests to their employees since when I sent that letter, uh, Misfits wasn't uh, actually working at the site. 
And I also suggested that they uh, look into a shuttle service. They have two shifts. And um, he said that he would definitely go over that with Misfits. And I uh, thought that was a great idea. And I just wanted to know, uh, Jesse answered my question regarding parking at Pied Out. Um, if we're doing anything with the camp meeting ground, Richard, I know I had quite a few. No, no, nothing new. Uh, so what are we going to do? I mean, we need to do something. Yeah. There's more potholes and um, it's a site. The, the, um, the posts are actually rusting. The paint's chipping off. I mean, it, it's just a site for sore eyes to have in the middle of our town. So what do we need to do in order to enforce something for that landlord to improve that property? Yeah, I asked our code enforcement officer to give me a list of what he thought we could deal with and I'll have to make sure he gets that to me this week. Okay, great. Thank you. And that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Well done. Uh, let's see. Ms. Holland. Yeah, Kate is always a tough act to follow. Um, I attended the rec meeting, but don't have anything uh, beyond what she said. I'm, I'm happy to hear that we're tentatively moving forward with the Memorial Day Parade. Um, attended the library meeting. They've got um, a nice event coming up on March 25th, um, celebrating Alice Paul. Um, should be a 15 minute uh, movie or lecture and then a question answer period. Um, we are, I think, 20 days out from the library fundraiser uh, virtual run. So if you haven't signed up yet, make sure you do. Um, and otherwise, um, thank you, Jesse, for looking into the, uh, the crosswalk issue at Newton's Landing that was brought up. Um, one follow-up to that, uh, there were concerns about speeding through Newton's Landing. Um, they asked for signage, but um, at a minimum, if that mobile uh, radar sign um, could get moved over to Newton's Landing Boulevard, um, it might be at least a good start for awareness. Um, but that's all I have to report. Okay, we'll take it on. Thank we'll you. On the list. All right, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Mr. Allette. Uh, the Joint Lane Use Board. Uh, again, we're dealing with the, the fence issue, which uh, we discussed. Uh, we also have uh, a report from Mr. Claus uh, that he put together with uh, the Route 130 uh, traffic study. And uh, I believe all committee people uh, have a copy of that. And uh, we would like to have the committee review it and if it's appropriate to send it on with uh, to the different agencies, I guess the Bridge Commission, uh, the Route 130 study, uh, and uh, I guess the Department of Transport, New Jersey Department of Transportation, uh, with whatever uh, surveys or reports that we're sending, if we could attach that, uh, Mr. Claus's uh, study with that, uh, and just being uh, additional information to share. And then with the school board, uh, they are going to introduce their budget uh, this coming Wednesday evening at six o'clock. Uh, and I believe the, uh, that'll be virtual and that information will be, if it's not already posted, will be coming uh, forthcoming. I think you just need to go to Delanco, uh, our Delanco Township website, uh, go on to uh, community, click on schools and uh, from there you should be able to pick up the website uh, to be able to participate or at least listen in on the uh, budget presentation from the school board. I thought that was seven o'clock for and I got the notice today. Is it seven? Oh, okay. I must miss misread it. I thought it was at six. I think it's seven. And that's all I have for the moment. All right, thank you. Um, let's see. Most of the stuff I've passed out via emails or forwarded on. Um, uh, uh, there was a county health department uh, conference call. Uh, 
Yeah, right after our, our last meeting, um, vaccine rollouts continuing. Uh, they're expecting a, a large shipment of the Johnson & Johnson uh, in April and County Health is gonna to try to get deeper into various communities with uh, their pop-up uh, uh, a mobile uh, vaccination site. And they're also gonna to try to push into apartment complexes and congregate living areas that weren't covered um, in the earlier phases. Um, one thing that was uh, uh, an interesting fact was when the statewide allocations as they come down through the county and the, get dispersed to the various sites, uh, if they, those allocations are for whatever reason uh, get shorted, get shortchanged, uh, the, air, the locations that get pulled back are the pharmacies and that are uh, either independent pharmacies or supermarket pharmacies and things like that. They pull back the uh, vaccines to the mega sites and the larger uh, facilities. So, uh, but that uh, should be occurring more infrequently as uh, the J and J uh, comes online and and uh, uh, they get into we get into the the larger groups that are now being authorized. Uh, there was a new bunch. Uh, uh, Authorized, authorized expansion uh, the last day or two. So uh, please uh, check the, the website. It's also uh, at the Department of Health and the uh, Township website has a lot of information under community public safety. Uh, let's see, there was a conference call this morning with uh, Congressman Andy Kim and his staff. And I've forwarded uh, what, what came out of that uh, expect more information to come in the next couple of days as far as the uh, American Relief uh, Act that uh, was passed by Congress uh, a week or so ago. There's a lot of uh, devil in the details uh, that's still being trying to uh, trying to sort that out. Uh, but uh, a significant amount of funding is heading for Delanco, uh, $435,000 for the township and $529,000 for the school district. Um, but uh, more questions, uh, as always, on these things as far as uh, uh, applicability, how to apply, and, uh, and so forth. But uh, that should be coming down through the uh, uh, DCA, Department of Community Affairs for the municipalities, and Department of Education for the, uh, for the school districts. So hopefully that uh, there were questions. Uh, there were about 60 mayors that were on the conference call. And obviously, one of the questions was, can we apply this funding um, uh, to the current year budgets. And uh, that's, uh, that's to be determined, obviously, by the state agency. So uh, expect some changes. And uh, uh, it, it was hinted that, uh, uh, or suspected that the budget filing deadlines may be extended. So uh, just expect some changes in the next couple of days and the next, uh, as everyone at, at several levels are digesting the uh, the impact of this um, of this bill. Uh, let's see, and I think uh, I think I'll leave it there. I did attend uh, via Zoom the school board meeting last week. Um, a little disappointing. Uh, the school board. Uh, some members still seem to have some confusion as to how they uh, how they're funded. Uh, one school board member uh, stated out loud that uh, the, the township gives us money to, to do our budgets. Um, and uh, uh, that was a little unfortunate. The other thing was the, that they seem to be, <coughs> excuse me, placing a lot of weight on is a ranking that was compiled of the percentage of tax dollars that are spent on the local school district. Uh, the percentage of your tax dollar that goes to the local school district and the claim that uh, uh, Delanco is not the lower percentile or lower quartile in the county. And it's, it's as I tried to explain and as many people have observed, it's, it's kind of a bogus argument. It's a bogus statistic. Um, many of the districts that are at the top of that ranking either uh, do not have police departments, do not have an open space tax, or they're extremely large school districts, almost on the size of uh, community college districts. So uh, <laughs> just as a uh, 
as a thought experiment, if we uh, disbanded our police department, uh, relax chief, that's not gonna happen. But if we disbanded our police department, just that, that reduction in our, in our budget would increase uh, the percentage uh, uh, of our school district uh, that uh, the funding that they receive, that the taxpayers pay, uh, that would raise it to uh, um, the middle of that ranking up and up to uh, on parity with what Morristown. Uh, so it's it obviously verifies that it's kind of a bogus argument. So um, unfortunately, a lot of people seem to be hung up on that, and it's really detracting from. Uh, solving the issues uh, that the school district has right now. So uh, I'll stop there um, and uh, I will be attending via Zoom the, uh, the Wednesday night budget meeting with the school board and uh, anxious to hear what, uh, what they present for this coming year. So with that, we'll continue on. Send agenda items, uh, ordinance 2126. Uh, consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Ordinance 2021-06 amending, or excuse me. Um, or is there anyone that has any item or a question about any item on the consent that they wish to uh, have a question of or pull out and consider it separately? Okay, hearing no objections. Ordinance 2021-06, amending chapter 295, governing vehicles and traffic to, to create subsection 31-31.2, making the provisions of subtitle one of chapter 39 with various traffic regulations applicable to the Dolan project at block 1900 lots 5.02 and 5.03 to prohibit tractor trailers from making right turn out of the exit. This is the first reading by title only and set public hearing date for April 12th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Ordinance 2021-7, stormwater control, ordinance repealing and replacing sections 100-42.1 through 142.17 of chapter 100 and amending chapters, uh, chapter 50-63 of the code of the township of Delanco. Excuse me, this is first reading by title only and set public hearing date for April 12th, 21, 2021 at 7 p.m. Uh, resolution uh, 2021, this should be uh, number 54, uh, refund of overpayment uh, dog licenses. Resolution 2021-52, authorizing transfer of 2020 appropriation reserves. Resolution 2021-53, award a bid of, and contract for the Field of Dreams event lawn improvements project. Uh, payment of bills accounts, uh, current fund $118,888.42, payroll $108,468.83, capital fund $5,986 even, escrow trust $4,025.50, municipal open space $126.88. Approval of department reports, approval of the consent agenda, a motion please. Come in. So moved by, that was Kay Fitzpatrick. Second. Burn. Burn, let me second. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes, thank you. Uh, meeting open to the public for comments and questions, session two. Comment question section of the meeting is now open. State your name, questions. Raise your hand or, yes, Mr. Mark. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, good, uh, good evening again. Uh, as a follow-up to Ms. Fit Fitzpatrick mentioning the uh, people who work at Stanko and Galetta, Misfit Fruits, uh, et cetera. Uh, another thing I was thinking of is you might ask them and work with New Jersey Transit to put in a bike rack, them purchasing like 20 bikes with a common lock so their employees could ride the bike to work, use a bike stand there and have other people commute back. Uh, basically a rent-a-bike, but owned by the companies. That's, that's a good idea, Dan. The only problem is the shoulder of the road is still 
uh, a problem for people walking or riding their bikes in that in some areas where there are no sidewalks. But um, I could recommend that to them. I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Interesting idea. Uh, Ms. Karen Manugian, please. Hello, yeah. Marissa Karen 10 Edwards Ave, Delanco, New Jersey. Um, I just wanted to um, bring up the point. I think, Mike, some of the information that you recalled in regards to how we perceived budgetarily we should act and the township should react or we were hoping to have some support may have been a bit misconstrued because it wasn't the exact intent that we were going to um, tell you how to use your monies, but we were just hoping for some support. And we were suggesting that the, re the reason we were in the situation is because some of the decisions the township had made um, had adversely affected our budget and our ability to um, have a balanced budget. Um, and true, we were under underfunded as well from the state, but also um, we weren't necessarily telling you how to, to do that. Um, we were hopeful that the pilot funds would be um, an option. Um, but we obviously understand that we can't tell you how to utilize your funds and how to um, handle your budget as well and that we would do what we have to do on our end if necessary. Um, and that's truly how we're going to move forward. And of course, the, the information you did send us today, like you had said, is, is a lot of un unknown information in that context. Um, we don't know when the monies would come. Um, the county is even giving us a little bit of a heads up that, this that these funds would not even be in our 20. 21 budget that these would have to be probably figured into 2022, but there's always the possibility that um, it could be a positive impact for our school district, but there's no certainty that it will at the same time. And unfortunately, we have to move forward as if the money is not there because we do have to submit um, our budget to um, the necessary individuals by Friday. So unfortunately, we'll have to move forward as is. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to, to put that out there. And on, you know, that's basically what I wanted to put out there. Yeah, I would, uh, there's, there's, from the other comments that were on the conference call this morning, there's, there's a lot of pressure to be able to include the, that funding in, in many municipalities, particularly ones that uh, did have a lot of commercial radio, radio, radables, uh, Mount Laurel specifically uh, for the loss of revenue, tax revenue from the, their hotels uh, due to, uh, the last year, uh, the interesting fact that came out some time ago was uh, Mount Laurel has more hotel rooms than Atlantic City does, um, and they've taken a huge hit. And so uh, their budget is in dire straits. Uh, so I would hope that uh, uh, some of the commercial and municipal needs uh, would uh, put a little more weight on the scale and also to assist uh, that benefit would also spread into uh, our situation and your situation with the school district and other school districts. So uh, we can all hope and uh, uh, make our phone calls to uh, local reps and see what uh, we can bend, bend the curve there. So uh, appreciate your comments. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions, comments in session two here? Right here, Mike. Can you hear me, Matt Bartlett, uh, 1800 Second Street? Yes, go ahead, Matt. Uh, just, just want to give you an update on behalf of DISA. And, uh, tonight is our last night of our registration for our spring sports for baseball, softball, and t-ball. So if anyone on this call has a child that would like to register, we have uh, about three and a half hours left before it closes. Uh, we're looking to have the full uh, season. Almost all of our teams are fully booked up, uh, except for 15 U softball, which we're keeping registration open till the end of this week to get a couple more players. But we're looking forward to a safe and exciting uh, spring season to get these kids out there and doing something besides playing on their tablets and Nintendos in some fresh air. Great. Matt, if I can, uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I've been hearing some things on a, on a partnership or a, a joint effort with uh, some of the, the River, Riverside Athletic Association. Yeah, sure, Mike. Uh, we actually did, um, we've been speaking with them over the last uh, six months or so. They've been having some issues with volunteers and their board. And uh, while nothing's been officially merged uh, between Delanco and Riverside, 
Uh, they are at this point not functioning and are recommending that all the Riverside children uh, register with DISA as we have an up and uh, running program. Uh, Matt did reassure me, uh, Mike, that more than half of the uh, youth registered for DISA uh, are from Delanco, are Delanco residents. And actually by Riverside uh, sort of encouraging their youth to come here, some of our Delanco uh, students are actually, or youth are actually back in DISA sports. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, Kate. A lot of our Delanco youth, uh, they just happened to play for uh, Raya, the Riverside Athletic League, over the years, and they didn't play for Dyson, but now they're yeah, back playing for Dyson. Back, huh? um, and also, yeah. frankly, without having uh, them send their kids to us right now, we probably wouldn't have a spring season for our Delanco kids, as there just wouldn't have been enough players uh, signed up to. <clears throat> excuse me, I have a, a full team for any of our sports for spring without having the uh, kids from the outside communities come in right now. And we are just about a uh, half over uh, between the Delanco and Riverside kids uh, having Delanco kids in here. Uh, but it, it's a good thing that's happening uh, right now. These kids need to get out. Good. Yeah, keep, uh, just, you know, drop us a note now and then as far as how how that's progressing just so we kind of you know as a committee and the governing body you know if there's something that uh, uh i don't know if the the joint insurance fund or i know you're covered on your own but just you know uh just keep a surprise uh, we may see something that uh want to tweak or something like that uh, just to make sure that uh, there aren't any problems or issues uh, going forward uh, with uh, with a merger or assumption of 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 uh, another community's uh, uh, recreational program, so. Absolutely, we right. sure will. And we'll be talking to Megan Jack as well about insurance and how yeah. to uh, partially cover as well. Very good. Thanks for the good work. Thanks, man. All right, any other comments uh, for this public session, number two? Um, I have a comment that I wanted to let uh, Marissa uh, Karamujian know that um, I'm still trying to use, uh, trying to um, have the township committee support some of the school programs for the youth. I haven't given up on that yet. Um, I hope to listen to your budget meeting to see what some of the needs are since Mr. Mersinger was not in a position to give me uh, any amounts for some of the school programs that the students are offered. I haven't given up on that yet. I just want you to know that I'm still going to push um, for some of that um, that pilot money. Um, you know, uh, there was one member of this township committee who has naysayed every pilot that's come along because their fair share is school didn't get your fair share, and some of the other entities in town. Mm. So to me, it's like. Um, it's like a win-win if we can provide at least some programs for the students, earmark the funds, uh, especially with some of this found money. Um, I think we should do it. And I just want you to know that, Marissa. Well, thank you. Uh, and any other members of the school board, because I think it's important that we work together in some areas where our youth are concerned. So absolutely. I think that's a great, great endeavor that you're, you're working towards. And we look forward to hearing some positive news. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right, session two is now closed. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike, real quick. I just got word we're gonna keep some of the uh, baseball registration open through Saturday. So uh, if anybody wants to register, you have to do Saturday now. All right. Literally, literally just got that note. All right, very good. All right, there's still time for you, uh, Richard, to get signed up there. We welcome them. Thank you very much, Pat. All right, uh, status coronavirus disease, uh, COVID-19. I've uh, kind of covered that in my report. Um, executive orders, uh, nothing new has come down. And status of township committee meeting for uh, March 22nd and April 12th, we're still gonna be uh, in a Zoom format. So any questions or comments on that from the committee? All right, discussion items. Uh, um, you skipped correspondence. It's underneath my staple. 
<laughs> I didn't mean to cut you out there. Correspondence, please. Okay, we have several items of correspondence uh, for this evening. We received a letter from South Jersey Sanitation that they have been sold to another company by the name of Seaside Waste. Hmm. So um, that information was provided. I know that uh, Mrs. Lohr was concerned and was reaching out trying to get information about whether um, the current contract needed to be renegotiated. I do not know what the result of that was, but. Um, yeah, my quick, quick update on that uh, is because we do this with Beverly and with Edgewater Park, Edgewater Park's the lead agency. So their solicitor is following up with the uh, new owner who of course needs to have new contracts signed with the three towns provide insurance with their names or have it assigned and have new uh, performance bonds. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing either in the specs or in state law that says we have to be notified in advance or that we have any say in it. My understanding is the Seaside Company bought several small vendors and uh, renamed them all. And most of the people are gonna continue to work, for, work with are the same people, just with newly painted trucks and a different name and a different corporate setup. So theoretically, it would have been nicer if it had come through us, uh, but that's one of the negatives we call it of having group bidding. It doesn't come through us and uh, the end result will probably be no change. Uh, we have a three-year contract that our, the attorneys will advise whether we just continue that or <laughs> whether or not they just complete this year and we have to re-go out to bids. So uh, we'll let you know if we hear any more. Thank you. Anything okay. else in correspondence? Uh, yes, we received correspondence from the uh, from Amber Perlmutter of the Delanco Environmental Advisory Board, uh, attaching a pollinator sign design that they had created for the basins at Newton's Landing. Um, Did everybody so, get that and take a look at it? I did. I thought it was excellent. Yeah, if no yeah. one has any objections, we can, we have 1800 and some dollars in a grant to uh, order them. So she'll be asking, uh, can she order them? And that's why we had this in time for this meeting. So if anyone objects? Uh, uh, likes the layout and what's the, likes the look of it, there's a, a total, I believe, four signs that the, the EAB will be purchasing. Uh, they're right now within a window of uh, uh, time frame of the uh, that the, um, the estimate the order uh, price is is frozen, and so they would like to get a go ahead uh, your approval for those four signs. Uh, slightly very uh, slight change in the text uh, depending on the different locations, but it'll have uh, the same overall look and. Uh, it would allow the EAB to order the four signs at a good price and uh, get this uh, get this going. So I would move that we um, approve the signs that were circulated to us or distributed to us and give them the okay to place that order. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, Mrs. Martin. Give me one second here. Um, we received an email from uh, Michelle Taylor. No, I'm sorry. From yeah. Mr. Heinold, um, referring an email from Ms. Taylor regarding the concept of creating a rehabilitation area to address housing conversions. And so the thought process and uh, Mr. Olette may wanna comment on this was that this could be something that the township committee would discuss in let's say July, once you have gotten past the budget process and uh, things perhaps open up a little bit more on the agenda. That's correct, Mrs. Martin. Uh, 
I was taken back a little bit that uh, we received the correspondence so quickly. Uh, we did discuss that uh, it would be something that would come to the committee uh, for consideration uh, in July when uh, we're past the budget process and uh, some of the other issues that we're dealing with here in town. Uh, the conversions uh, to my knowledge at the moment is uh, we've had the two properties. We had the one on uh, Hickory Street where we had the fire and now the one house is under construction uh, where we had two houses there before. Uh, and then I believe Mr. Martin said there was another property that had happened. Uh, and Kate, you may be aware of this. Uh, there was another uh, duplex that had been converted to a single home. Uh, yeah. One more. Right, one more. And, and I actually did a lot of research in 2006 and I prepared an ordinance actually for conversion uh, and, and it set up a, some sort of an abatement program. I had at that point working with Delanco Savings and Loan to have loans at a reduced rate, uh, interest rate, but with interest rates so low now. So I will pull, I have a file, it's gotta be at least an inch or two thick that I will be happy to uh, review it and circulate that to the township committee when we are in a position to maybe move forward with an incentive program for residents to convert these apartment dwellings to single family homes. So I'll be glad to do that. So then I'll be coming down the pike. Yep. Um, also, um, I had emailed all of you. I don't know if you received that email. We received over the weekend, um, and it was uh, too late to place it on the agenda as an individual item, but um, as an item of correspondence, a marriage ceremony request. Um, the couple would like to utilize Riverbank Park, and they would like to have their ceremony on April 3rd, which is prior to your next meeting. So I'd just like to um, get your approval so that we can respond to them and let them know that it is okay, hopefully it's okay, for them to use uh, Riverbank Park for a ceremony, marriage ceremony on April the 3rd. So. You mean this over, it, right? Correct. Riverfront. It's our riverfront property. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not Gateway, River, the Riverbank, yes, in front right. of Thurberg Mansion. Riverfront. Yeah. Riverfront, yeah, that's fine. I think it's fine. I think I would move to uh, approve that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Okay. And um, Mayor, uh, Ms. Provenzano had sent an email this afternoon with updates regarding the GIF. Did you want to... Um, do you have that just, in front of you? Yeah, you want me to just go over that real quick? Yeah, I don't, I don't have it at hand right now. Let's say. Okay, uh, just a few mm -hmm. items from the GIF. Uh, wellness, cyber, operational safety, and safety incentive funds have all been granted to the township. Training courses are still being held online through the Mel Safety Institute. And the deadline for 2020-2021 elected officials training is May 1st. If no one had, if there's someone who hasn't completed the elected officials training, um, and that is all the 2021-2022 elected officials training has begun online. Um, and that is it from Ms. Provenzano. And that is it for correspondence. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thanks for uh, catching me before I got too far along here. <laughs> no problem. All right. Uh, let's see our discussion item tonight. Um, cannabis legislation, as uh, Mr. Heinhold has been uh, prompting us over the last couple of months, uh, we need to have some kind of uh, sit down and actually get down and sort out what we want to do or not do on this. Uh, the thing is, we do have to do something. And... The clock has started and we have to have an ordinance in place by August 22nd of this year. And that's uh, regarding the various, uh, the six classes of cannabis. Um, as far as discussing this and taking public input, how do you want to do this? Do you want to have it uh, 
kind of publicized as a as an upfront discussion item at our regular meeting on April 12th and uh, talk about it and uh, invite uh, public comment and uh, and go forward from that or what uh, what's the thinking of the committee on the best way to get uh, uh, learn the most I've been uh, at our last meeting, we decided that we would have that discussion at our second meeting in April, which was April 19th, because I've been reporting that date, April 19th, to my other committees that I attend. That's what we decided at the last meeting. Okay. Well, that it, and, and it would be open to anyone who wants to join in and make a comment. Right. April 19th. I think it got, had gone back and forth. Uh, uh, whether to have Mr. You know, we'd have Mr. Heinhold attend that one as well, uh, but is that uh, agreeable to the committee to have? I, I think Doug probably will have to verify he could be on Zoom for that. Well, yeah. But the that other reason it makes sense is we're going to introduce the budget on the twelfth. We have three ordinance public hearings, including yeah. any further discussion on the uh, fence ordinance, so that maybe the nineteenth would be a better time to do that yeah can you give me those six classes mike i've been polling people around town it's interesting the reaction but yeah. i don't think i have all the info yeah it's um, the uh, the last four pages in the agenda packet uh, class one's a cultivator license class two is a manufacturer class three is a wholesaler class four is a distributor class five is a retail and I believe class six uh, is a delivery and that's the one we cannot uh, prohibit. So okay. one through five uh, are, are what we have options on. And whatever position we take on any of those, I think we're locked into a five year. Uh, yeah, you, you can't, you, if you prohibit them, you can unprohibit them anytime. But if you don't prohibit them, you can't prohibit it in that five-year yeah, okay. initial period. Yeah. That's that's the key time frame. And the other thing is I'll give you information on the fact that the plus and minus, there's also a tax. The local municipality can enact a local cannabis transfer tax and user tax, mm -hmm. which is 2% for all the activities except for the wholesaler. Wholesaler is only 1% and they pay us directly. It's not through the state. And but we have no idea how many dollars that would be because no one has any real idea how many dollars it's at the point of sale, the cost. We, we also don't know if they can put their uh, money in the bank to where they can give us a check. Well, that's another story. They still have to write us a check, however they uh, put their money, even if they have to, now that's mostly retailers. We're talking about wholesalers and cultivators. It's a different story. Same right. law, federal funds. Federal, well, that's you know, credit cards. I, I think they're allowed to write checks for you, but that's you're right, John. It might be an issue. That they're not giving us that answer up north. Yeah. Right. John, I suggested to some people that have made comments to me that they put them in writing to the township committee so that uh, I'm not. I get them from the gas attendant, from the, <laughs> uh, everywhere, my store. I just talk to people and uh, yeah. you know, I'll report on it later what I'm getting. Right. Well, I, I, think, I think that item that was put at the end of your agenda is probably very, very good summary that you can use for your decision-making. And the key thing is, how do you want us deciding on the date, first item on the agenda, besides putting on the website, do you want an email blast, do you want news releases? You know, do you want to send a summary out like this, two pages? So, you know, how do you want us to get the word out so that anyone who has an opinion knows either to put it in writing as Kate pointed out and send it in or show up at that meeting and uh, give the opinion or show up at the meeting and be educated by right. Doug, hopefully. I would send it out, that summary is a good summary. I would send that out by email blast and put it on the website. I think it's you know important for, for residents to see that we need to take an action on this. Uh, taking no action may not be the right way to go. So, uh, is everyone uh, in agreement or want the, something else added to that? Uh, email blast, we'll have it uh, discussion forward. Uh, 
leading item in the uh, agenda on the 19th and we'll verify that Mr. Heinhold can be present and to answer any uh, legality issues or detailed questions that we may not want to venture into. And the timetable, as we pointed out, is, as uh, Mike said, we have to have it adopted by that August meeting. And because it's a change to zoning, once you introduce it, then you have to send it for consistency review to the Joint Land Use Board, and then it comes back and have public hearing. So you probably need to assume you need a couple of months once you introduce the ordinance. So that should be introduced uh, probably your first meeting in June at the very latest. Yeah. So April 19th. Right. April 19th, first item on the agenda. All right. Everyone's all good with that? Yes. Yep. Any other items uh, not listed for discussion? Any right comment now? related to the subject? Please, Chief. All right. Um, it's not so much the um, your discussion about the ordinance, but just uh, you know, I don't know how many people are really looking into the, about the new law. Um, it's it's quite shocking. Uh, the police are going to be pretty much handcuffed. Um, there's really not too much we can do with people smoking marijuana in public. So be prepared. Tell your constituents to be prepared. Um, for an example, if someone is in possession of six ounces or left and they're 21 years or younger, we cannot arrest them. We're instructed to give a warning the first time and a warning the second time. We're not permitted to re make it mandatory or make them provide us the information to give them a warning. The intention of the warning is to have a statewide tracking system. So after the second warning, you can actually charge them criminally. Um, just give you an example. This is just one ounce of oregano. We're talking, you know, less than six ounces. So it's quite a bit. So um, there is no criminal offense. You can't charge someone for bringing marijuana into a school. It's an administrative rule, but it's no longer a criminal rule the first two times. So uh, they did quite a number with the constitution you know, that was passed. But, um, I, you know, the days of people complaining about the smell of marijuana, there is not going to be too much we can do. And also the legislature tied this into alcohol. So if you're 21 years or you, if you're under 21, Possession of alcohol has the same rules. You do not get charged for possession of alcohol under the age of 21 the first time, the second time. Third time you may, if you have the documentation that they've been warned to other times. So. Governor must have been drinking Kool-Aid when he signed that. Never understood it. Uh, but Jesse, we, you know, there's been a problem on the riverfront uh, you know, the young people down there, they, you know, I've caught them smoking already. Um, and they congregate, you know, on the riverbank, probably private property. Um, you know, they're just not very respectful either. And, and it smells and, but are you saying that they can like sneak alcohol down on the riverbank too? And all you can do is give them a warning. You can't take that alcohol. I mean, it's the open we can, container. We can take apply. the alcohol, but we can't charge them. You only give them a warning the first two times, and we're with alcohol from trash and litter. They don't they don't walk away with the alcohol bottle. They throw it in the river. Well, yeah, I mean that, that the littering you could charge them with the littering ordinance ordinance, which would probably be more more substantial at this point than actually charging with them possession of alcohol underage. So, so that's the that's the mindset we're just going to have to focus on is, you know, um, you know. The actual littering part, not so much trying to stop the underage drinking, but if you have someone, you know, 21 years old um, smoking in a public park, I mean, I haven't seen anything that's addressed that yet. Mm. All right. Well, um, well just that, food for thought. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll work together uh, with the administration and uh, with you, Chief and uh, uh, work on uh, some kind of package of information to uh, post on the website, informational, uh, 
to have people um, informed of, uh, of what's coming and the discussion on the, uh, on the 19th. So thank you. Any other last items for a discussion before we uh, adjourn into uh, executive? All right. Uh, we'll be uh, going into executive. I think you need to, to do a resolution uh, authorizing executive session. Yeah, I just, uh, we'll be going into executive for uh, probably 30 to 45 minutes back in the public, and uh, uh, we should be uh, concluding our meeting at that time. So, resolution uh, for executive, please, Mrs. Martin. It will be resolution 2021 55, and uh, the public will be moved to a waiting room if they decide to stay uh, for the duration of the meeting. And once the committee is done with executive, everyone will be moved back to public session for the conclusion of the meeting. Okay. Um, let's see, okay. motion for a resolution 55 for executive. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm, I'm moving. Uh, just give me a moment. All right, we're back in public session. We have no action to take at this time. Uh, motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second, please. I'll second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Thanks for your patience tonight. Have a good night. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.